Now let us see a compound CCL4. This compound is called carbon tetrachloride. We will come to this compound later. But for now, okay, first try drawing the electron dot structure for this. So, we have a cup and we have four chlorines. So, what can you understand? Carbon has four valencies. So, each chlorine must contribute to one valency. So, each of the chlorines should make one bond with carbon and chlorine as we know it's 287. So, if it gets one electron from carbon, it becomes 288. So, this will also be satisfied. So, the structure for CCL4 is this. And the electron dot structure will be CL has 7 electrons. So, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This CL has 7 electrons. This CL has 7 electrons. This CL also has 7 electrons. So, CL needs just one electron. So, give it the electron of carbon. Oh, wait, wait. This is not correct. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 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 This should be the thing. Remember that no electron should be shared between these two chlorine atoms. They are totally independent. So, make your circles accordingly. They should not enter or take up any electron from an atom which is not of any use to it, which is independent. So, for example, this chlorine should not take up an electron, this circle should not contain an electron from this chlorine or it should not contain another electron from carbon. That would be wrong. And carbon over here has all these chlorine electrons. See, carbon should also not contain these electrons of chlorine. It should contain only one electron. This is the electron dot structure of CCL4. Now, we have SO3, in SO3, S has 6 electrons, it's 2, 8, 6 and O is 2, 6. So, okay, before this electron dot structure, let us see the structure of SO3. S is there with 6 valencies, 6 electrons, so 6 valencies, so 6 bonds and oxygen has 2 bonds each. So, this oxygen, as I told, oxygen will not bond with oxygen. So, this oxygen will have both its bonds with sulphur. This oxygen will also have both its bonds with sulphur. This oxygen will also have both its bonds. So, 
this has two, this has two, this has two, and sulfur has a total of one, two, three, four, five, six. So sulfur's valency is satisfied, oxygen's valency is satisfied. So this is the correct structure. The electron dot structure. It's oh, I drew four oxygens. So used to with carbon that I draw elements all across the all around the element. So this oxygen gets two electrons of the sulfur. This oxygen gets the two electrons of this sulfur. This oxygen gets the two electrons of the sulfur. And sulfur gets two electrons each from all the oxygens. Now in a compound N2H4, what happens? Now, whenever you have this N2H4 sort of things, leave the hydrogen first. In C2H4 also we did the same. First draw the nitrogens and join them with a single bond. Now, there are four hydrogens, so there must be two on each nitrogen. Now see, automatically this N has 3 bonds, this N has 3 bonds, so N's valency of 3 is satisfied and H is obviously satisfied. So, now in C2H4, C had a valency of 4, so we needed that double bond to satisfy C2H4 which was ethene if you remember. But N has a valency of 3, so it does not need a double bond. So, N, N, oops, not this. H, H, H. H. As usual, first do the H things. Then these two are not required. These two electrons of nitrogen, nitrogen already has one to needs only three electrons. So these three will bond with with will share electrons with these three. So these two electrons are not required for sharing. So it would be something like this. These electrons are the unshared pair of electrons. Even these two electrons are the unshared pair of electrons.